you're watching QTV Youth Dialogue and I am your host Jenna Posonko. It's good to be back. We deeply apologize for the late start due to reasons beyond our control because we know um, a lot of UTG students are glued to their seats waiting for this very important conversation that is about to take place. So I'm here today with the aspiring presidential candidates of the University of the Gambia Students Union. This has become a tradition on this program. We've been doing it every single year and I think we just missed it during the pandemic or something. But, you know, we, it has been a tradition because as a program, we have a deliberate policy to also help contribute to the nurturing of, you know, young politicians, you know, and that is what we're about to do here today. We've had very heated debates in the future, and I hope um, today this will be heated as well, but heated in a very positive light. You know, um, we are all mature individuals. I guess we'll be able to do this with calm, and it's about policies. You know, it's just that, and that is what I'm expecting. But I'll give the honor to the aspiring presidential candidates themselves to introduce themselves. So each of them have two minutes to, to introduce. And um, we will start with Omar. Omar, thank you so much um, for joining us, for willing to come here and exchange ideas with your fellow aspiring candidates. It's a great pleasure. Thank you very much, Geneva, for having me. I am Omar Deba, a final year law student, University of the Gambia presidential candidate for the UTG Inter-School Alliance for Change for the forthcoming UTG SU election slated for 10th of November 2022. I was the former Deputy Secretary General of the 19th Executive Council of the University of the Gambia Students Union from 2019-2020. And uh, since then, of course, I have been playing my quota um, in student leadership um, through various cadres. Um, by participating in activities of the of the student union. Before then, of course, I had a long distinct leadership track record in terms of student leadership, all the way from Farafanya Senior Secondary School to the Gambia College, where I serve as president of the Gambia College Press Association, and also president of the UNESCO Gambia, Col Col Gambia College chapter, among other host of leadership cadres that I, I took over, some through election, others through appointment. Thank you very much, and I'm very grateful <coughs> to, to be here. All right. Um, up next, Kemo, Kemo Conte. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you so much, uh, Geneva, for this opportunity you accorded us with. Uh, my name is Kemo Conte. Uh, I'm currently the Education and Research Minister of the University of the Gambia Student Union. Uh, prior to that, I serve as Assistant Secretary General in the Social Sciences and Humanities <coughs> Student Association called SOSA. Um, of course, from there, I transited to another position in the same faculty-based association called uh, where I man the position of guidance and counseling minister. But prior to that, I have attended three institutions uh, or tertiary institutions. Um, I started with the Gambia College where I serve as a debate representative in many consistent occasions. Then I moved to the Stratford College of Management where I became the first elected <coughs> Stratford College uh, International Relations Society's president and I moved to the position of IPRO. Uh, from there also I then uh, transited to University of Gambia where currently I am serving in the position of <coughs> education and research. And at this point in time, I'm offering myself as a candidate again for in this presidential elections uh, on behalf of the coalitions, a coalition of solutionists and salvations that are contesting or that come together to contest the elections against uh, an independent candidate and then the team aliens. Yes, yeah, so independent candidate, Ahmadou <coughs> Dujabate. Right, thank you so very much, Geneva, for the opportunity. And uh, thank you so very much, uh, His Excellency, Mr. Diba, and of course, His Excellency, Mr. Conte, for making it to this dead wonderful debut. And then all the viewers and all those who are listening, of course, um, I want to also seize this opportunity to extend a greetings to everybody. My name is Amadou B. Jabate, currently a lecturer at the Gambia College School of Education and Public Health. I am currently also the country rep for IFED Global, where I led 22 youths to an international youth diplomacy conference in last July as well as in 2019, respectively. Um, ladies and gentlemen, currently I'm also serving as the country rep for the All Africa Students Union, which uh, is the largest student governing body in Africa that has direct um, global um, link with the Global Students Union. Aside from that, I serve as the president of the Gambia College Students Union in 2018 with numerous achievements, which is the oldest and the largest tertiary institution in the Gambia. 
This notwithstanding, I've also served as the president of the Gambia College English Club. Away from that, currently in my capacity, I am the Secretary General of the Gambia College Staff Welfare Association. So looking at my leadership track record, you know, it has definitely emerged from both national and international backgrounds. Therefore, I will not want to take most of your time since we've already missed uh, about 10 minutes. I will want to take a break here, and that is about me, Amadou Bijobate. Yes, so Kemo, yes. to start with, I want to start <coughs> with um, something that ensures that students go to school. But there are numerous policies that all of you have, mm -hmm. but there's something that sometimes keeps students from going to school, that is scholarships, tuition fees. So what innovative um, ways do you think can be put in place to ensure that there's some sort of resource mobilization mm -hmm. or just any innovation that can come from a presidential candidate um, to, to change that narrative, you know, in terms of supporting students? Thank you so uh, very much, Geneva, for that question. I think this has been a perennial problem, mm -hmm. perennial for the fact that it has long since been there. Uh, students would uh, stay home because they cannot pay their tuition fee. Sometimes they have to come to the account office in order to have negotiation with them to write commitment letters. Or sometimes they will have to go, uh, they have to come to classes at the end of the day when the exam is due, they will not have the ability to write the exam. Mm -hmm. uh, the challenge has been consistently there. So first and foremost, uh, as part of our strategies, mm -hmm. uh, which we are going to do collaboratively with our finance minister, is to uh, engage authorities such as Ministry of Higher Education, Research, Science and Technology to open up the gap of scholarship <coughs> that they allocate for students in the University of Gambia. Because if you looked at some of the disciplines, especially in the political science, mm -hmm. in the law, in the social sciences at large, you'll see that the amount of scholarship that the state allocates for these people is very, very small. So we will engage the authorities in negotiation to ensure that that gap is widened so that a, student, uh, can, a social science student can also be considered. And not only that, but we can also uh, uh, invest money from uh, the existing endowment fund or we can also uh, engage, because currently the council have done what is called the donor conference. And this donor conference, there are so many commitments which has been given by international organization as well as national organization that they will help the University of the Gambia students in the areas of scholarship and so forth. So we will bank on both national and international partnership. Okay, you mentioned us. political science development, so is it because you're from that uh, Yes, I'm a political science major. Yeah, is it because you're coming from there and rooting for your own people? Not only that, not only that, I talk about the social sciences. Okay. When I talk about social sciences, it is not limited to political science yeah, as well as the development studies. Yes, but because we know consistently the government scholarship has been directed to the science okay. uh, and other areas, physical <laughs> and natural sciences. Okay. So we are talking about the areas that are uh, in large extent has been marginalizing that. Or yeah, where but that is done and that has been there. It's an established fact. But yes. you are just saying you are now just going to engage the ministry, yes. talk to them and they to widen the school. To widen it. Yes. Okay, D Mr. Diba, do you think that is enough, just engaging the ministry for them with a dialogue, for them to widen it? Do you think that is enough <coughs> to actually change the narrative when it comes to this? Do you agree with what he's trying to put across now? Not only enough. I don't think that would solve the problem of um, students from economically okay, disadvantaged so families. It? The council has to take a stand, and that is to ensure it embarks on a strategic resource mobilization okay not through only donor conferences, mm -hmm. but also help to expand the revenue streams of our union's account. Okay. And this would include establishing an alumni association, which of course membership would be based <coughs> on monthly prescriptions or as the date may be determined by the council. Uh, that notwithstanding, I think the council also needs, I believe the council has to be innovative in terms of what ideas it brings on table. Um, in 2019-2020, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. we were in the council and mm -hmm. I was Deputy Secretary General right. and we were able to conduct a strategic resource mobilization mm -hmm. that gave us an amount of $1.4 million mm -hmm. as the second ever student <laughs> leadership to have provided semesterly scholarship for students. So donor fatigue is all over. It's a global crisis almost. So depending heavily on international and national donors without having in plan a strategic resource mobilization domestically, could immaterialize the plan that um, Honorable Kemo just highlighted. Okay. So yes. which means and what he's saying, you are saying that what he's saying is not the way forward to change It's things. not the best way <laughs> forward. And I believe that as creators, of mm -hmm. course the 19 Executive Council, yeah. as creators of the endowment fund, it will be a great injustice to continue investing the MSDG endowment fund into treasury bills of profit maximization, where hundreds of students are 
being um, unable to continue their studies at the university and more so in the wake of the adoption of a policy for late tuition fee yeah, payment by the UTG Senate. Do you think what you're saying is achievable? It's not also the entire uh, goal to achieve the scholarship program for the student. Okay. Uh, but uh, donor uh, conferences are c quite very, very a key in this as well to engage. There are people out there who are interested to come in and assist the University of Uganda student. So it is the leadership of the union that can take a bold step to get out to these people with a proposal that is convincing. You're already part of the union, so do you think that has not been done before? We have actually done that. We are currently, we have engaged donors they who didn't are work. Willing. No, yes. Yes, the it donors did. have already okay, shown. Okay, we'll yes. get back to yes. that. So, um, Amadou Bijabate, um, do you agree with what the two gentlemen are saying? He's talking about engaging the ministry to expand on donor conferences. Mm -hmm. He's talking about something else there. So what are you telling us now in relation to changing this narrative? All right. Thank you so very much once again, Geneva. And of course, um, I may say I partially agree with both of them. All the ideas are sound. But uh, I must have said is um, the ministry or the government cannot do it alone, mm -hmm. or they cannot do everything. However, I must also want to seize this opportunity to thank the government of the Gambia. Over the past year, since 2018 coming to now, I noticed that when His Excellency um, Honorable Badrajouf was the Minister of Higher Education, Research, Science and Technology, together with the government of the Gambia, as we know, the President, His Excellency Adam Wabaro, is the Chancellor of the University of the Gambia, have been very supportive to ensure that you know, most students in UTG benefit from scholarship from yes, the ministry. So now what innovative but aside way from are you that, putting in place to ensure <coughs> that, okay. you know, the narrative changes? Aside from this, I am now trying to come up with an opportunities of like reaching out to people like Modu Trodabo. You talk of other philanthropies who have actually been very, very much supportive to UTG. Especially the reason why I quote him as an example, he has actually successfully sponsored more than 100 students so far in the University of the Gambia. Mm. So as far as this is concerned, I happen to have the personal privilege to meet Mr. Dabo on several occasions, and he is still willing to do more, you understand? So the Vision Development Foundation, under the leadership of Modu Dabo, is doing well, and then more of him, we want to at least tag on them to create what we call scholarship camp. And this scholarship camp now, mm -hmm. it is going to be inviting all the st key stakeholders, mm -hmm. both government and private sectors. Then mm -hmm. we come and then dialogue with them mm -hmm. to see how best they can also ensure that, you know, they're broadening the scope of scholarship scheme that has been allocated to different students, students especially the needy ones. Okay. So I think with this, we can be actually change. be able to attain our goals. Okay. And also as the country representative for IFED, I mean, uh, IFED Global and of course all Africa Students Union, I know that you know, it is one of the ASU strategic development um, plans and objectives to at least also consider African students to benefit from some international um, scholarships. Yeah. So Mr. Kimo, do you agree with um, his <coughs> talking to people like Modu Turodabo and the people who have money in this country? With so that, do you think that is enough to change this? So I think Ahmed is agreeing with me when it comes to the issue of donor, okay. uh, donor conferences. Okay. Uh, this is not just to engage an individual mm -hmm. alone, mm -hmm. but of course it can be uh, broadened mm -hmm. so that you can have so many people who, can, who are showing interest towards helping the university student so that they can uh, okay. help them. In Mr. Diba, they are agreeing, the both of them. Are you with them? I can see a vision in it. So I would not agree because there is no sustainability measure. I mean, you cannot depend heavily on an individual or institution <laughs> to always seek funding from that individual. Mm -hmm. In the a sense that the institution of Modu Trudabo is no longer available, that means he may likely, he may likely go out of option. So okay. sustainability is, for me is, is key so? in any funding well, um, drive. If you want can to take Modu Trudabo to fund, um, let's say, I mean, uh, institutions, or let's say spend you know, $30 million at a point just for as a gift and so on, you know, I can remember when we have the three years Jotna here, you know, Dabo was the one who even rescued Gambia. If not for him, you know, the two Lebanese who were importing rice, together with him, he has to at least go into at least a stake of, you know, encouraging those people because they wanted to uh, they divert their business to other countries for the fact that three years Jotna might affect uh, their business. He has to rescue the Gambia. If not for him, if he can rescue the entire country, and he has been doing this over and over, so we are all aware of him. Even national politicians banks on him, as well as you know the government key stakeholders and so many others. I mean, so I'm just yeah. citing him as an example. But does not mean responses. that Dabo mm -hmm. has to be the only one person to do this. Yeah. Situational responses <coughs> cannot be used as he had stakes to provide scholarship for students. He intervened at a moment when there was a humanitarian crisis, of course, and uh, that to me is more of a corporate responsibility he was exercising. We're talking about here providing scholarship for students, and we must take innovative approaches to solve this issue. 
And that is why the need to establish the Alumni Association cannot be overemphasized. All over the world are graduates of University of the Gambia who have the potential to, to, to actually effect change through sponsorship, provision of seminars, and creation of other opportunities for university students. And we must take responsibility. Okay, Mr. Jabato, one more time on this and we move away from it. Okay. And well, I must want to say, um, is the, do you think the Alumni Association may be enough for also, you know, addressing this issue? It would Because as be. I'm saying, I'm, take, I'm talking about it in a broad term, including the Alumni Association and any other donor. Okay, that but did you didn't mention that. Indeed, I was like, you know, we can have a scholarship come and then I just started Modu through that as an example. But then I say with other key stakeholders that we believe can come in to help, you know, our young, our own Gambian citizens. So this has included everybody. We don't mind where it comes from. But for the fact that, you know, we see that it is coming towards helping our own citizens of this country, <laughs> irrespective of where we come from, we will grab it. Okay. And then we so are you concerned about where <coughs> it's coming from, or are you concerned about the model, the structure? Sustainability <coughs> is my concern. I okay. mean, of course, if, they, if, the, if the revenue is going to be available there all the time, there is no point refusing to take cap to capitalize on getting the revenue okay, for students. Okay, finally, Mr. Conte, and we move away from that. The, at this point in time, uh, we have uh, we have completed on uh, making the concept note for the establishment of the alumni association okay. uh, of the University of Gambia, mm. and strategies have put in put in place. In fact, uh, the launching of this particular association was announced, but due to certain circumstances, it has been pushed by the Directorate of Student Affairs and Alumni. Um, to institutionalize a particular support source or where funding can come from is very key to ensure that there's a sustainability plan. Mm -hmm. But of course, this can also be <coughs> complemented by donor conferences okay. because there are people out there who are not the products of University of Gambia, but yet they have uh, the willingness to come and support. But they are also sometimes shy away from because nobody is getting out to them. Mm -hmm. So that is why it will take a proactive leadership to reach out to these people, okay. persuade them, present plan to them as to how they can. So, are you the telling me that the idea of the alumni is not coming? The alumni association he's pointing at is not an alumni, idea coming alumni from. Alumni is key. It's important. Yeah, what my point is, you were talking about the alumni association and the concept put in place mm -hmm. that is about to start mm -hmm. through your the current executive. Yes. Am I right? Yes. So, how's that? Are you aware of that? Well, um. I, I wouldn't quite agree with that. There is because never, I want to know. There is never I want time. to make that clear. Yeah, is is because you are banking on this as an idea you are coming up with. Yeah. And he's saying this is already my on the point is My point is that there is never a time students were consulted as to the modalities in place for the establishment of an alumni association. What I know to have exist is our law currently has provided the establishment of an alumni association. But whether in fact the council is currently working on making this materialize is a big question and then well, I, would, I, 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 I would say that until today his council has not done any strategic planning for the, exe for, the, for the student union and as we speak the council is still on building the strategic plan it, it, it envisioned for the students so I wouldn't see how they could work in parts and bits to, to make things work squarely for the interest of the students so I would take that maybe as more of a, a story um, sort of Sorry, yeah. Okay, so let's move away from that. The issue of transportation, you've, you know, highlighted it. <laughs> Students, uh, we know how buses have been donated, but that's not enough. We still see UTG students suffering. And in an ambitious way, um, it's something that you intend to address. Mr. Diba, how do you intend to address this? I must state that it is directly not a responsibility of the Executive Council or the Students' Union to provide buses for students. Part of the tuition fee paid by students mm -hmm. includes development fee and also transportation yeah. and under my leadership my campaign messaging remains that once elected into office we would make sure we mount a consistent and a systematic pressure on the University of the Gambia management to facilitate the procurement of buses that notwithstanding of course we would tap on other venues where we could get secure buses for students as we did under the 19 executive council as the first ever student leadership to present to the university student two buses that are currently in service. But this year, the policy goes with an added value, and that is to tap on the potentials of ICT students to digitize the bus service of our university through the, create, the, through the creation of the UTG-SU um, bus app. Yeah. And with the digitization process, we believe that using the app, <coughs> students would conveniently track bus services, availability, arrival, and departure time. And this would ease the burden of transportation for many students. Interesting, if it's achievable. What's your take on that? Yes. Uh, transportation. Tra transportation is key, of mm -hmm. course. Uh, 
especially hard to reach campuses. Uh, let's talk about Banjul, mm -hmm. uh, Medical and uh, Allied Health Sciences. Uh, talking about Faraba and other places, Brikama, mm -hmm. as well as Carnifin campuses. Students consistently cry uh, about uh, transportation, even though uh, at this point in time, the buses that are available, uh, which the current council have maintenance, mm -hmm. uh, uh, are, are actually in service for mm -hmm. students that are having their classes on Faraba campus. Right. Uh, this is as a result of the <coughs> pressure on, on, on classrooms at, on Brikama campus, which is never the campus for University of the Gambia. So um, what we're going to do as an approach first is to bank on the short-term uh, plan. That is to ensure that uh, the remaining buses that have not been maintenance, which could be maintenance according to expert advice uh, on nothing more than the uh, 400,000 dollars for you to uh, change the engine or for you to make certain maintenance on the ch engines. Okay. And so this study has already been done? This has been done. Okay. And, uh, an intensive <coughs> research was conducted by my logistics minister, uh, Ronin Mate, who has actually fed us with relevant information as per the situation of those buses. So as a short-term plan, we'll ensure that those buses are maintenance as soon as possible so that now we can revitalize and coordinate the, the, the direction of these buses, not only to transport students uh, from Brikama campus to Faraba, but of course to diversify the route uh, that is to link students from Brikama to Banjul as well as Ghanifin campuses. All right, so Mr. Mr. Jabate. Yes, um, thank you so very much. Um, this issue has become actually very interesting uh, mm. and it has become a body for UTG students. All what I must have said is that, you know, I was aware that when actually the government gave us um, three brand new buses, those are the red buses, mm -hmm. and they are otherwise known as the city buses. And after that, you know, we've also noticed when we had the protest in office, you know, where I was the very person who mediated, mm -hmm. you understand, for at least us to have um, four brand new buses. Mm -hmm. Immediately during the protest, um, the government could not have immediately to give us a bus. But then we were lucky that the inspector general of police was reserving two buses somewhere around Fajara. Mm -hmm. And then the then minister, who is now the vice president, plus the former secretary general with the interior minister, with the president who is the, our chancellor, I have to uh, tell the then finance minister to give IGP seven million to replace his two bosses. And then that evening there was a meeting um, held at Mohas to approve an amount of seven million dollars from the university council to order two new bosses at a price of um, three point five million dollars. Yeah, and then now that those bosses yeah. are there, all what we may have said still to bank on the government, mm -hmm. at least particularly the president, our chancellor, to tell him still to help us with at least two other new buses different from those that have been provided. Because or else at this moment, point in time, as Honorable Kemo mentioned, I may agree with him on this point, that yes, the only so uh, possible way out is to actually go and um, provide maintenance for the current buses available. But that notwithstanding, we really need um, brand new buses now that people are even we trying really to, need go it, to but yes. go to so Faraba. Jiga, what do you think about uh, <coughs> the two approaches that they want to use to change the situation in relation to that? Maybe um, ultra ambitious because telling the government to procure just two buses as additional new buses to ease transportation for students, to me, um, it's, it's still an act of insufficiency. So I, of course, agree with Honorable Kemo that mm -hmm. there is need for maintenance to ensure that the current buses that are parked mm -hmm. are activated into service. Okay. And that would be a kind of an affirmative action, in my view, to respond to the dire situations of students, particularly. Yeah. So, Mr. Jobate, yeah, insufficiency, already, yeah. that's the word for me. Okay, but I've said that already they have been doing, and then I did not deny for the fact that we go in for maintenance, but then at least what we can do, and they are the fastest. Normally, we've been banking on many places, but then actually it's only the government who will come in to provide quickly to take decisions. And in most cases, that involves the vector power of our vice, our chancellor, okay, through the vice chancellor and the ministry to ensure that they give us. So I think if they did it one, it works too. I think still, the fastest we could think of to bank on them, but that would not still prevent us from going to service the ones we have on the ground through the directors of facilities to ensure that you know these things are done before, particularly before we even move to Faraba. Because come in February, we are going to Faraba, and then looking at it now, we have just only three proper buses that are working for us. Okay. Out of you know, we have about eight or I mean seven buses yeah. in the UTG. Mr. Dibble? Yeah, I mean, like <laughs> I said, maybe I'm hyper ambitious, but really even not more than nothing less than ten buses can solve transportation challenges of students. Because the thing is, in our wake of movement to Faraba, the transportation difficulty becomes even more complex how the university would be able to devise a transportation mechanism mm -hmm. that would shoot not only those that will be going to Faraba campus for lectures, but even medical students and nursing students that will be going for right. preclinical. Yeah, 
That is it. <coughs> At this point in time, quantity of buses is the number one priority mm -hmm. in order to meet the transportational challenges on the ground. And for you to solve that, it's not only maintenance of the current buses that I will call them, they have engine issues, but rather also to increase the quantity. Mm -hmm. And in our wake of moving to Faraba, I, I think this is the number one condition that any proactive student leadership can put to the government or Minister of Higher Education, Research, Science and Technology, that all strategies must be, must, must, must be tailored towards solving the problems of transportation. Because mm -hmm. if you want to move four schools to Faraba at this point in time, how many people are in those four schools? Let's look at BP alone. Their population is more than 3,000 to 4,000 students. Mm -hmm. School of Arts and Sciences Education. Mm -hmm. How many people will be needing a bus on daily basis to go to Faraba? That call for the increment of quantity to ensure that they are made Well, that is good. there, but you know, gentlemen, it's about how to get these things. But anyway, we have other things that, other challenges, existing challenges that we need to look at. But now we will skip that, get back to that, and take a look at this. That is, what special policy are you bringing in? Problems are there. They've been there. All of these things that we are talking about, I've dealt with it for the past four years that I've organized this debate. Now, Kemo, what special policy, something that has not been an issue before, but want to bring something new to the table, to change the ways of the University of the Gambia. What? Thank you so much, Jennifer. I think now we can unlock our policy stock mm -hmm. and try to bring in things that have not existed before yes. or that were not in the, in the process before. Mm -hmm. So, uh, Jennifer, the problems of University of the Gambia is in twofold. Okay. Uh, when you look at the welfare and the interests of students, mm -hmm. There are problems that are general problems, mm -hmm. and there are problems that are peculiar problems. Okay. We've talked about general problems, which has to do with transportation. Mm -hmm. But we're also forgetting that there are issues which are peculiar problems. And one of the problems, if we take it from the perspective of a particular school in the University of the Gambia, that is the medical school. A medical school currently, um, they don't have even a, a proper policy in place that will address the issue of their elective programs. There, and when I talk about elective here, I means this has to do with their overseas programs. Mm. These are programs that they go outside in order to get exposed to the state of the art medical devices that can make them acquaint with the evolution taking place in the world of medicine. Okay. So that when they come, they can also implement it in their own country. The, this is part of their curriculum. Uh, as we are having their curriculum been mm -hmm. reviewed at the Senate level, in mm -hmm. fact, there's an attempt to remove that curriculum, uh, that particular elective program mm -hmm. there, and we are going to push a strange action to ensure that it is remained. Because we feel that medical students are quite important mm -hmm. aspect within our university community, and anything that can help them to promote meaningfully towards the development of this country, the healthcare of this country, we're going to uh, defend that. What we're going to do at this point in time, the medical school, or mm -hmm. that is the SMAS administration, is tasked with the responsibility of drafting mm -hmm. that particular uh, policy. Okay. We will expedite that process in conjunction, uh, in collaboration with the medical uh, student executive, mm -hmm. that is the unique answer to ensure that uh, this is defended at the Senate and is passed there. Not only that, but there's a problem with their portal. Currently, okay. considering the nature of their program, mm -hmm. considering the nature of their assessments and other things, mm -hmm. we will be on holidays while they are going to school. And okay. they are spending seven years, we are spending four years. Okay. So they cannot, ha use this, they cannot have the same portal system with us because our programs are not uh, in line. Okay. So, so how uh, will you change that? So currently, uh, we've put a consistent pressure on the mm -hmm. management. Mm -hmm. There is a new portal system developed for medical school. Okay. What we're going to do now is to hire someone. But Mr. Miss, 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 Mr. 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 Um, Conte, Conte mm. are you telling me policies from your the current executive that you're continuing with? Yeah, there are policies that has to be completed. There are poli we have two. I have two policies. I have a policies that are to be sustained, that are to be improved and expedited, and there are policies that are of advanced agenda that are to be new to be coming in, because there are issues that have commenced initially. You can otherwise there will be policy gap. In mm -hmm. public policy analysis, you study the existing policy in place and you see how you can fix incoming policy to it so that there will be no policy gap, so that there will All be right. no duplication so of policy. So before we go for the break, quickly, I would like to hear from Mr. Diba as well as Mr. Jabate, mm -hmm. and then we'll go for a short break. And when we come back, we'll open the lines. Yes, Mr. Diba, what new thing are you putting on the table? Um, actually, looking at different schools within the university, we have nine schools, mm -hmm. and a lot of different schools have different, different problems. Right. Um, School of Journalism as an example, until today it does not have 
a digital media lab that is equipped by the university management. And uh, these, of course, are not new things. Politicians have been discussing this a long time ago. Even though we have no policy action as regards this matter, but we are able to get a female candidate who is currently their vice president to join our effort in ensuring that we address issues that are related to School of Journalism and Digital Media. And having her in council as vice president and student of that school, of course, would help guide our process of ensuring that basic services that they pay for, which form part of their tuition fees, are provided by the university management. Most interestingly, I mean, different schools, such as the law school, School of Business and Public Administration, also have different, different problems. But there is this general problem that we hardly addressed, and that is the issue of furniture and other items that are necessary for effective learning. Mm. Looking at the University of the Gambia procurement process, you realize that <coughs> there exists a big gap because the inventory and the procurement process of UTG regarding chairs has never been informed by uh, statistics in terms of the number of newly admitted students, mm. continuing students, and the material resource needs of schools. So that means the University of the Gambia has been blindly buying furniture to address, you know, furniture inadequacies in schools. So our stand as we regard this matter currently is that we need to establish a material resource ratio system through which the University of the Gambia would be guided as it would be able to receive directly from the student representative, that's the executive council, um, the number of newly admitted students, active and continuing students, so that the procurement and inventory process as regard basic materials and also internet connectivity would be a guided process and such services would not only be procured for students' use, but they would be effective and they would be efficient and very reliable for students. All right, Mr. Jabate, well, what new thing are you bringing on the table? Yeah. Yeah, um, uh, for the fact that you asked also elaborate on general problems, I think one of the general problems we have one we has to do with clearance because we've noted that um, a lot of UTG students currently, even if they pay their tuition fees at the bank, they have to it has to take takes almost a week or at least two three days. You know, if you go to so how fee, can you change you that? You find fee. You know, so I think uh, as a concerned presidential candidate, you know, or a president, I hope if I come in office, <coughs> so at least. Um, put something in place, a digital system, thereby students will now have an automated system of clearance. Even if you are on your bed, once you just, just like when you are uh, applying to um, have an admission in the university, what do you do? Once you make your payments and then everything, you just Okay, where is the money for this going to come from? Do you, have, do you intend to partner with a specific organization or something to have this? Okay, I think this does not even need to, for me to partner with more organizations. Okay. All I need to do is, you know, just to... I mean, uh, put more pressure on the university management to the Office of the Director of Students Affairs. Yeah, but you know, you guys, let's be honest here, putting pressure, put more yeah, pressure. In, but what time, pressure? Yeah, for this time, how is it, a going, to, is it going to be a student protest? Is it so going to be a petition? Time, what is it going to be yeah, exactly? For this time, why I said this, this yeah. particular thing is very, very important because it's not like it's not there. And for the fact that they pay their money, we believe that if they have not paid, one can understand. They've already paid. The okay, how will you put the so pressure? Is it student protest? What exactly? That's what I'm saying. Yeah, through the student portal. Okay. The student portal, you know, only have to be, I mean, uh, put in, modify in such a way that it will also give access where students will only upload their receipts that they have paid in the bank. And automatically, then they will have to clear themselves. Just like the way they go online to register, to register their courses by themselves. Okay, so, so how is, is that going to be everything. achieved? Well, you don't expect students to be leaving from Brickham. Yeah, that is said and done. It's not done, thing. but how will that be achieved? Specifically, are you going to call for a occupy something not or actually what? not actually no. all i need i'm just asking how i okay. because you're talking about putting pressure on the administration mm -hmm. i can sit on qtv and say i'm putting pressure on utg administration okay but i'm looking for mm -hmm. the way to put the pressure okay now it's simple all we need to do is for the fact that we know that every student pay we have to ensure that you know lectures wouldn't comment unless if every student registered that is it. Because it's not fair. I cannot pay my money and then somebody pays his money. Lectures I will not command. So who's yeah. going to, how will that be determined yeah, for is, lectures not to yeah, commence? That is to, to be very justice because, you know, you don't expect I pay my money in the same date with KMO and KMO got access to, you know, clearance and I'm true, not clear. True, so true, that is it. True, true. So we all have to be considered. Yeah, but for lectures not to commence can yeah. be beyond you. So yeah. my question now is what is going to happen? Is it going to be an... What the pressure? What no, is it's going simple. to? What is going, what to, happen is going is to ensure it's the pressure to happen? Okay, what we could do? Yeah, we know that Suna Institute is um, actually the one taking care of uh, our portal. All right. So it's two things. 
as the management already have signed that partnership with them, yeah. either the management of Suna has to ensure that they put something in place by extending that to our portal, or we look for another system, okay. maybe a manual system. So how system, will you make you, a manual, you do that? Yeah, probably a manual system that we have to go through the faculty office to clear students. Because they all have access to our portal. So you just need to go to the nearest faculty office and the faculty officer will clear you to endorse that you have paid and then sign on your receipt and clear you. I mean, that's going to be a big disaster. Okay. University moved away from the manual system manual a long system. time ago. The automated clearance so system. Saying, the automated, what we are trying to the automated clearance system. Then it takes all it needs. It ought to happen. First, then we have to it ought to happen. On we, only need, we only need a responsive and a responsible student leadership to ensure that the automated clearance system is effective and operational before the commencement of semesters. And you cannot wait but until... How? You cannot wait. I'm coming. Asi, asi, I'm coming, how? please. You cannot wait until lectures are about to start mm -hmm. and you try to show leadership. You need to be concerned before this resumption of schools, months before the resumption of school, to ensure that the ICT and the UTG management works closely to, 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 to make sure the automated clearance system is effective, operational, and service. And uh -huh. where there are defaults, mm. and that is to ensure there is total system check. Usually, the portal system, it's not of a business to, 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 to them until it is time for course registration and payment <laughs> so of tuition. So how can you fee. ensure pressure that it is a concern before course registration and commitments I, of I lecture. do not really think there is need for any press or what is what okay, is he advocative and okay. ad advocate advocacy ad advocacy and engagement is the best way forward and that has if to that start doesn't what work, you said you want to tell yeah, me that after your me. students already pay their tuition fee now you just, just have to just look at the management maybe i mean those in charge of the poll you don't need to wait until students like pay their tuition that fee and that is what i'm saying but you have leaders to have to project the future this thing is put forward and it is taken seriously leaders have to project the future they don't need to working. wait until tomorrow Especially to solve the problems of, the of tomorrow. You solve the problems of to tomorrow. To you clear. solve the problems of tomorrow by thinking yeah, about so them Mr. today. Conte, thank you, so, for a break? We'll thank you right so much yeah. for giving me opportunity again. Um, if you look at our student union mm -hmm. government, we have a technical and logistics minister position there. What is going to be his role to ensure that this automatic, uh, automated portal system but you are so already part of the executive. That's what what that, is happening? That's what I'm, I'm coming. I'm coming. Okay. I, I have to fix that point. What we're going to do to ensure that uh, the system keep running properly as it's supposed to be done is that to ensure that there's a uh, consistent check on the system. But you can maintain a consistent check, but hence it is not directly on the you. Problem can ensue. And when does happen also, they require swift response. And that swift response is what is going to uh, be put the system in place. But there can be alternative in case there is this particular problem going on. And that is going to be to decentralize our University of the Gambia administrative functions. Okay. And what we see in the UTG, even if you want to get your uh, transcript, mm -hmm. you want to get your, uh, you want to get cleared, you go to one office, just one office. You look at the number of human resources available in that office. In fact, to respond to the needs and the res uh, of the students uh, that are in a huge number is always a problem. Yeah. We are going to descend, uh, increase human, inject human resources there, provide he money for them. Inject human resources yes. in the University of the Gambia? Yes. Since if university can create a job of a deputy vice chancellor for so and so who will be paid okay, more I'm than so that. how are you guys I'm going to cutting you short. how is this that is going to happen? Talking, if you are now talking no. on the you know to automate the digital system, then it does not need most human resources because no, why we put the we need, in fact why do it we is need needed. ATM? It is, it is needed. I mean, if you now spend money or resources on you know digitalizing the system, mm -hmm. then that means you you need less human resources. This, All you need this is, is part of the alternative plan. It. It's, it's part of the alternative. You okay. already agree that the portal is not on the university the Gambia. In case it have a problem outside, then if the human resources is dispersed to other campuses, then it's going to limit pressure on the only existing uh, office to uh, attend to students. So gentlemen, we will go for so a short break. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. So, so, so um, we will go for a short break and um, when we come back, um, the program will continue. All right. Thank you. World Cup is here. Enjoy the beautiful game of football with our Samsung Smart TV. Enjoy a massive discount on any Samsung TV purchased. We have sizes ranging from 32 to 85 inches, packed with an ever-evolving variety of content and features. The Samsung Smart TV also provides your favorite video on-demand services such as Netflix, Amazon, YouTube, music streaming services, 
even various games and sports content to enjoy as you please. For more information, call us on 333-217, on WhatsApp 350-555, or visit our brand shops at the ground floor of QCell Building or at the Bruce B. Turntable. This promo lasts till 30th December. Welcome back from that short break. If you're just tuning in, you're watching KTV News Dialogue. And today I'm here with the aspiring presidential candidates of the University of the Gambia Students' Union. So, gentlemen, um, due to time constraints, we have just a few minutes to go. But um, I think now we should shift the conversation about what Lamin, Di what, you know, Lamin has, Omar. Lamin Diba, Omar. Omar Diba has, that Kemo Conte doesn't have, that UTG students have to vote for you. What um, Kemo Conte has, that the other candidates does not have for UTG students to vote, vote for you, with the same as Amadou B. Jabati. What do you have that UTG students have to give it to you? <coughs> These gentlemen, what do they not have that you have? Okay. that UTG students have to give their vote to you tomorrow. Thank you very much, Jennifer. The problems are known by all of us. The difference lies in the vision we have as different individuals with different abilities of thinking to effect change in, in the university. And my vision and my policies are well informed. And uh, I have no doubt that the innovative approach we want to take to solve some of these basic problems are the best and the most sustainable ways to approach and tackle such problems. When it comes to transportation, procurement of buses is not sufficient for students. We must digitize the bus services. When it comes to the automated clearance system, ensuring its full, operational, its, its full operation, effectiveness, and reliability is not enough. We have to decentralize the automated clearance system by establishing the accounts of in Brickham or Banjul to improve accessibility and quality services. Also, when it comes to the tuition fee payment which many students face and they grapple with, particularly those from economically disadvantaged families. I do not believe that heavy dependency on donation seeking in a global world that is faced with economic crisis is a sustainable way. And that is why part of my policy is to ensure we establish the Alumni Association as a principal, as a principal association that could diversify our revenue streams uh, as a union. And most importantly, to also review some of the policies we have in UTG, particularly the late tuition fee payment policy adopted by the University Senate, of which tens of students last semester <coughs> became victim. They wired their monies into the accounts of UTG mm. lately, and they were denied entrance into examination hall. In our belief, that policy is not reflective of the economic situations of students, and it ought to be changed, but that change must be complemented by strategic resource mobilization, and make good use of the endowment fund we created as the 19 Executive Council mm. to disburse semester tuition So you're telling students. me these... These are the... The, uh, the approaches are not, different, but the problems... Cannot execute these approaches. Not Why they cannot. They? Not they cannot. What they're communicating is different from what I'm communicating. Okay. I believe and that... And that's not good enough. Uh, um, of course, without a proper vision that is guided by information and reasoning ability and the spirit of commitment, of course, and a solid team that could help drive that, that vision, that is nothing that could work. And I believe that's, that's exactly the compass, the side of the compass that they fall on as two presidential yes. candidates. Thank you so much. I think, uh, like I said, our problems are clear and our, uh, they all highlighted the problems. Mm. And now it is about commitment, not only commitment to this problem, but of course experience. And I can proudly say that across, uh, from my left to right, or across the section of uh, the three candidates that are seated here, um, I am the only candidate who has consistently been serving students in various uh, associations. I have served as an assistant secretary general in my faculty-based association. I have served there as a guidance and council minister. I have become the most popular elected candidate in the history of Brickham to serve in the education and research ministry of the union. So that means that I understand things from the faculty-based association towards the main <coughs> union. So that gives me a broader view of the understanding of the issues at hand. And that is why I am able to drive inform policies from that to be able to vision uh, and, and create a, a, a timeline for this vision so that they can be achieved. So let's talk about a few of my policies, mm -hmm. like I said. Quickly. I am yeah. from the School of Arts and Sciences. Yeah. Uh, under the School of Arts and Sciences, you have a particular department. They are called the Physical and Natural Sciences. Yeah. Currently, these are uh, units of physics, biology, and chemistry. Uh, 
in order to develop this country, you cannot do it without science. But if you go to this particular department, they even lack proper science lab. Mm -hmm. That is why upon making a thorough study of the science, I find that even the microscope they have there are substandard. Um, they don't have a, even a lab specialist and mm -hmm. all that. So that makes me to project issues that the management yes. have to provide Due these to things. Under Amadou, Amadou right, um, thank you so very much. Quickly, I just yeah. want to delve into this. As somebody who've led um, successfully the Students Week that was held in Tendaba for 10 days, I think already, you know, and plus, the the other services that I have been rendered into the UTGSU, ranging from the uh, 17th Executive Council, the 19th Executive Council, and of course the 18th Executive Council, respectively. So there are a lot of problems that are happening. But our major problem in UTG right now is not even about policies. We all have policies, we all know policies. But as you may even see, why do we even have to have different policies? I think you know the idea should be you know who can easily solve the problem of students because we are working in the same universities. Mm. The problems actually are not supposed to be that much dif differ. Mm. But then it's unfortunate that you know the existence of this campaign where you have I mean team alliance and the coalition. He is the I mean the, the presidential candidate for the coalition and then uh, he is the presidential candidate for team alliance. So you think uh, so you think I independence is the Are we the part real of the deal? problem or the solution? Yes, of course, <laughs> I am saying what I am saying here is mm. you know we've seen in the University of the Gambia but students are not tolerating each other. Mm -hmm. Students are fighting. Mm -hmm. Students are going to police. Mm -hmm. Students are. But how do you solve that when you are an independent? Assassination yeah. <laughs> and just to name a few. Mm -hmm. This is in fact what triggers me to come out as an independent candidate. Okay. We expect when UTG students meet, at least they should actually be discussing about their issues and of course you know the way forward and also to be taking resolution mm -hmm. every 30 minutes. Okay. But whenever the executive meet, they cannot even come up they with resolutions. Alright. So Due to time ladies and gentlemen. So I think we have to just cut this short. Thank you so much. Congratulations. I'm aware that... Um, may, I re may I remind him yeah. that we are part of the solution and not the problem. And okay. someone, who's, and someone who stands as an island so cannot yeah. provide solutions to our problem. All right, gentlemen. So as an independent candidate. Yeah. So, gentlemen, um, to, um, I'm aware that campaign stops 12 o'clock. Yeah, so t 12 a.m. So, um, university students, you know, just go ahead and vote for the right candidate. You've heard from them. And... Um, I am happy that we are doing this because it shows that politics starts from here and then you have a responsibility to do, to do it maturely with discipline and then you will determine what the future holds. So till we come your way next week with another interesting program, bye-bye.